Welcome everyone, my name is Justin Freeman and I'm a former offensive lineman at Duke University and now I research. I research trends in professional football and some of which I think will be pretty interesting for you as coaches to hear more about. If I know anything at all about coaching football from my time as a player and a coach, coaching is really all about picking up these tiny winning edges. It doesn't matter if you're a strength coach, getting players fit, if you're a coordinator installing a game plan, if you're a position coach repping drills, it just doesn't matter. Everything you're doing is all about picking up these tiny winning edges. And there's a winning edge to be found through analysis and situational football. And that's what we want to talk about today. So I want to talk about two pivotal measurements that I believe can transform your approach as a play caller on offense and defense. So the goal of this presentation is not to get you to buy into advanced analytics or to convince you of anything, really. The goal of this presentation is to simply quantify the things that you already know to be true about football. You're free to take away whatever you'd like from the information, but I do want to present two established statistics that I think might change the way you look at play calling. Those two things are expected points and success rate. So let's start with this example. Your team returns the opening kickoff of the game. Where would you rather it be returned to? Your own 25-yard line or your own 40? Obviously, you'd want to get it out to the 40, but why? Like, why does it even matter where you start your drive? Because we know, obviously, that we're more likely to score points as we get closer to our opponent's end zone. And on offense, scoring points is what it's all about to win football games. In fact, in this example, we can quantify the value of that additional yardage. Drives beginning on the 25-yard line will produce 0.61 points on average. Drives starting on the 40-yard line will produce 1.60 points on average. So those extra 15 yards on the kick return are worth almost a full point on the scoreboard. We don't have to guess anymore. We've got real numbers from years and years of real results. And with that same logic, the number of points you can expect to score based on field position, it can also be affected by down and distance, too. There's a big difference between 1st and 10 at your own 40 versus 3rd and 10 at your own 40, right? Just ask your offensive coordinator. 1st and 10 is far a better situation. A 1st and 10 from the 40 will produce that same 1.60 points on average. But a 3rd and 10 from the 40 is only going to produce 0.37 points on average. As a coach, you almost always want to be putting your team in a position to walk away from a drive with as many points as possible, right? In fact, what you really want is each and every play to put you in a better situation than the play before. Getting closer to the end zone, better situation. And we can measure how good we're doing with one very simple metric called expected points. Expected points measures the advantage of future points that the team possessing the football has over its opponent assuming average teams. And if we measure the expected points before play and compare it with the expected points after that same play, we can measure exactly how successful that play was. For example, let's imagine this situation. First and 10 from our own 40, expected points are 1.60, and we break off a nice gain, 50 yarder up the middle, which puts the ball on the opponent's 10 yard line. It's first and goal from the 10. Expected points all of a sudden have transformed. They're 4.91 now. So expected points added is the difference in those two numbers, 3.31. So we can say that that play was worth 3.31 points to our potential score. So by that same logic, expected points added can be a negative number. I know that sounds weird, added and it's a negative. But if first and 10 from the 40 is 1.60 points and we have an incompletion, it becomes second and 10. Our new expected points is 1.05, which means that the incompletion resulted in negative 0.55 points added. Expected points helps us quantify the things that we already know. Field position, as well as down and distance, they're critical, critical in determining how successful a drive will be. And the success of a drive is directly tied to the outcome of those plays. Some plays are going to add to our expected points, and other plays are going to subtract from our expected points. You're either going to be in a better position to score points or a worse position to score points based on the result of every play. If you're in a better position to score points than the play before, we call that a success. If you're in a worse position to score points than the play before, we call that a failure. 
That brings us to our next useful statistic, success rate. Success rate is just simply a measure of how often a play results in positive expected points, aka did we advance the ball enough on that play to stay on schedule and improve our chances of scoring. You'd be interested to know that last year only 38% of running back rushes result in positive expected points. 38%, that's not very good. 62% of all those runs are taking you off schedule. Compare that to a 45% success rate on quarterback dropbacks. Dropbacks do include pass attempts and sacks, so 55% of the time a dropback is unsuccessful. And we can cook up success rates really on any type of situation. We can do success rate by down and distance because we know that we need a different amount of yardage on first and 10 than we do on third and 10 to stay on schedule. So I can tell you success rates by down and distance. Success rates are also different based on how many men in the box you're facing. What do you think is going to be more successful against nine in the box, a run or a pass? So I can break down success rate by personnel group. I can break down success rate based on run schemes, power versus uh, zone concepts, you name it. There's unlimited ways to separate categories for success rate. So I'd encourage you as coaches to learn as much as you can about expected points added and success rates based on down and distance for rushes and dropbacks. I'm not asking you to become robots with your play calling, but you've got an opportunity to know which type of play is going to result in the best outcome for your team. And you can't just ignore that. That's a huge, huge edge. So why would you not examine your own play calling tendencies and try to make them optimal? The Philadelphia Eagles picked up this winning edge last year and won a Super Bowl for the first time in franchise history. This stuff is knowledge, and knowledge is power. So what are you going to do? 